Hey there, this is Vaughn, Spirit of Health, your trusted source of health information. Always looking at it from a godly point of view, a biblical point of view of how God created and designed the earth point of view. So I have a question today that I want to give my thoughts, opinion, answer on, and, and that is, do genetics cause disease? And I think that's an important question because I think everybody here, either themselves or other people in your family, those of you listening to this, can say that you have been told, someone has been told, that their medical condition is genetic. And because it's genetic, there's probably nothing they can do about it. And so I just want to give you some thoughts on that. And there's actually some research and statistics out there uh, that I thought would be interesting to share as well. And so I have worked with a lot of people with chronic illness over the years. Now, what I have seen as far as true genetic issues is very, very rare. An example of a true genetic condition would be something like Down syndrome, where there is a chromosomal DNA problem at birth. But then that still begs the question, why did this damage occur? Why did this genetic defect take place? And I can tell you what I think causes what we call genetic problems or genetic defects is toxins and poisons, all man-made. This is not what God created with the Garden of Eden. This is not what's available in nature. It's man-made toxins and poisons that cause our quote-unquote genetic issues. And I'll give you an example. Some of you might have heard of DDT. It was a pesticide sprayed back in the 50s, probably 40s, 50s. Well, this stuff was so poisonous, babies were being deformed. It almost eradicated the eagle population in the United States, owls and other birds, because you poison insects and then the birds eat those insects and all of a sudden the birds are poisoned, they're dying, they can't lay eggs, they're having deformities with birth just like human beings were. So the question is, is that a genetic problem or is that a poisoning problem? I would say that's a problem of man-made poison. So we live in this world today where people are told X, Y, Z disease condition, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, blood pressure, high cholesterol. It's in your family. It's genetic. It's genetic. It's genetic. So I would ask you the question, is that true? And these numbers aren't exact, but it certainly seems that the medical system wants to believe that 95, 97, 99% of your health issues are likely genetic, or they'll dogmatically tell you it is genetic. And I would say the flip of that is true. And there are studies, there are statistics, specifically with things as serious as cancer, that show at most only 5% of cancers are what we call quote unquote genetic. That it's 95% environmental and toxicity. And like I said, the poisoning of humanity through our food supply, through all these man-made chemicals, through heavy metals, radioactive elements, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the reason I think this is so important, I wanna share it with you, is that if you're told it's genetic, well, let me tell you the thought process of the medical system. Now, not necessarily your doctor or your nurse who might be awesome, amazing, loving, kind people, but it's just the deception of the industry itself will tell you that it's genetic. So what that does is that leaves you powerless. If it's genetic, no hope, nothing I can do. And then guess what? You're at the whim of whatever that doctor says you need to do. Because you know what? If you're hopeless and you're powerless, then all you can do is take this drug because that's the best chance you have to either alleviate your symptoms or stop the progression of this illness. Like MS, for example, they give all of these uh, immunosuppressant drugs to stop the suppression or the continuation of the disease. 
And uh, again, I ask you, like, does that make sense? Is that the right course of action? Is it truly genetic? Is there truly nothing you can do? So I believe genetics is used as kind of, you could say a cop-out, so to speak. No research, no proof. If you asked any doctor to prove that XYZ disease is genetic, they absolutely could not do it because the proof doesn't exist. It's just something they say, and it's something that people believe. And I believe it's to control and to manipulate people to feel hopeless and powerless and believe that they're gonna be sick forever and that their only chance is to take these drugs. And we know drugs come with unbelievably shocking amount of side effects. Yet if people don't feel like they have an alternative, that's what they do. So if the reality is that toxins and poisons are really the problem, and what we call genetic is really a toxicity problem because it's absolutely well known, 100% true, that toxins will pass from the mother to the baby. And if you want a really, really simple example, we've heard the term crack baby. If a mom is on drugs or alcohol or smoking cigarettes, that can cause deformities in the baby. Well, why not herbicides or pesticides or glyphosate or heavy metals or radioactive uh, chemicals, uh, radioactive elements, or chemicals in our food supply, all these dyes and all these weird things that are in fast food. These are toxins and poisons never meant to go into the human body and they're causing suffering of children upon birth. So if our medical industry is so awesome, why do we have growing rates of sickness and disease across the globe in America? Why do we have children with autism, uh, cancer, diabetes at a young age that you never heard of two, three generations ago. There are clearly problems with this flawed industry. And again, what I believe is a, uh, a, a misrepresentation of what genetics actually mean and how much illness is truly genetic. So I give you this message because I think it's truth that will empower you to look beyond what your doctor thinks or what he was taught in school that is most likely in error. And I encourage you to seek other answers because if the real problem is toxicity, well, guess what? You can find out what the toxicity is. You can lab test for Lyme disease, mold, herbicides, pesticides, heavy metals, radioactive elements, all these things that we're talking about. That's why we lab test. That's why I love what we do. That's why I love showing somebody with chronic illness on paper, on a lab result that look, you have mold. And then the, the gout breaks down in tears because it's the first time in 20 years of illness, somebody actually told her what was wrong with her. That is powerful. And again, believing that what the doctor says about, well, that it's genetic and there's nothing you can do. That person doesn't ever get any answers to why they're not well. And that is a, a hopeless feeling, truly. So I hope this helps you understand and empowers you to know that there are answers out there. There's hope out there. There's real root cause problems that are likely toxicity and not necessarily genetic. I mean, it honestly doesn't matter if mom and dad had it and grandma and grandpa had it. Like you're your own person. And yeah, you might've been born with some toxicity, but God designed the body to heal itself. It can detoxify. We can use food and water and sunshine and herbs and all these amazing things God gave us to get toxins and poisons out of our body. So that is the truth. That's what's gonna give you hope. And that's what's gonna help you overcome your chronic illness. And so anybody out there who's been told your issue is genetic or has a family member who's been told their issue is genetic, I can pretty confidently tell you that that is not the truth and that you need to seek other options, other ideas and opinions and find out the root cause of why you're really well so you can be empowered and trust God in your healing.